Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Elder Justin Dillard. And on today, I just bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. My mother will be leading the scripture that we will be looking at is Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 19. Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 19. today you sing the song won't it be grand or you sing the song won't it be grand please won't it be grand oh won't it be grand won't it be grand oh won't it be grand i'm going home to live with jesus won't it be grand? You talk about me just as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to be my knees. I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to be in Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter. Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter, 1 through 6, and also 16 through 19. I'm going to go ahead and read Second Chronicles, the 35th chapter. 1 through 6 and 16 through 19 then I'm going to pray and turn the service over to my mother I will be reading from the New King James Bible version Josiah keeps the Passover now Josiah kept the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem and they slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the first month and he set the priests in their duties and encouraged them for the service of the house of the Lord verse 3 then he said to the Levites who taught all Israel who were holy to the place Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of God, king of Israel, built. It shall no longer be a burden on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves according to your father's houses, according to your divisions following the written instruction of David, king of Israel, and the written instruction of Solomon, his son. And stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the Father's house of your brethren, the lay people, and according to the division of the father's house of the Levites so slaughter the Passover offering consecrate yourselves and prepare them for your brethren that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses okay 16 through 19 so all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day.
to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord according to the command of King Josiah. And the children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time and the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. There had been no Passover kept in Israel like that since the day of Samuel the prophet, and none of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as Josiah kept. With the priests and the Levites, all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, in the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah, this Passover was kept. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, please forgive us for our sins. Lord, please come in, clean us up, wash us, so we may be whiter than snow. Lord, I just thank you for giving me the victory um, as I travel far and near. You have kept me safely, and you have kept me this far through danger, seen and unseen. Lord, I thank you for the ministry you have given me. Lord, I thank you for my family. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's listening to this service on today. I thank you, Lord, for the worship. Lord, I thank you for the prayer. Lord, I thank you for giving us another time to serve you with gladness. Come before your presence with singing and enter your courts with praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I ask that you please touch my voice right now. It's a little um, raspy right now. Please touch it. And also, um, please touch my mother as she brings forth this message on today. And um, bless the people who are listening um, so that we may have increase, favor, and wisdom, wholeness, and boldness. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for all the people you have put around me, Lord, to encourage me and lift me up. Lord, also, I thank you for allowing many to see another year, another year added on to them. Lord, I pray for those going into surgeries and those who are coming out, those who are going through therapies and those who are coming out. I pray for our children during this weekend. I pray for those who are in war zones. I pray that you will give us comfort, peace, and Lord, we thank you for the tranquil peace you give us, Lord. The peace you give us is not of the world. And we thank you, Lord. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I pray for my relatives, my family. I pray for families who are connected to those who are listening. And Lord, I just pray for this country as a whole. There will be some who will be attending services on today. There will be some who will be leading. I pray for the leaders. I pray for the lay members. Also, I pray for attendees in the congregations who are coming in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. In your scripture in Luke the sixth chapter, verse twenty eight, it says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Lord, I pray that that will be our prayer and our action towards those who treat us any kind of way. Pray for those who are single. I pray for those who are married. Pray for those, Lord, who are divorced. Pray for those who are widowed. Lord, I pray for those who are confused. I pray for those who are incarcerated. I pray for those who are in the court system. I pray for those, Lord, who are elected officials right now, Lord. Lord, I pray for preachers, teachers, leaders. Lord, I pray for mothers, aunts, uncles, fathers. Lord, I pray for those who are expecting right now. Please touch them, Lord, to give everything to you. I know the name with the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Amen.
Okay, I'm turning it over to you. What what Sunday school book, please? Okay, this is from the Teacher's Guide, the Leadership Resource of Adult Bible Study, Sunday School Publishing Board. For the fall sessions of September, October, and November 2024, it's Faith Teacher's uh, Guide, Sunday School Publishing Board. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, so the, the name of the lesson is Claiming the Treasures of the Past. The key verse is Second Chronicles chapter 5. Chapter 35, verse, verse 1. Moreover, Josiah kept the Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover in the 14th day of the first month. The lesson aims, as a result of experiencing this lesson, the participants should be able to do the following. Evaluate Josiah's renewal of the Passover observance in terms of significance for Israel's ongoing relationship with God. Two, notice interior distractions that compromise obedience to God. Create a plan to renew, revitalize, and neglect, ne revitalize neglected spiritual practices. And the terms are charge. A charge is an obligation or a duty. A course. Observances. Services. The priestly divisions. Or in the NIV, a sacerdotal courses. Sacerdotal courses. S-A-C-E-R-D-O-T-A-L. Courses. The Passover, derived from the Hebrew word Pesach, is based on the root Passover and refers to the fact that God passed over the houses of, Jew of the Jews when he was slain the firstborn of Egypt during the last of the ten plagues. The priests were chief ministers, referring to the Arianic priesthood. And the word sanctify means set apart, concentrate, consecrate, dedicate, to be kept or holy. <clears throat> Why this lesson matters? Promises and commitments can become neglected over time as their importance is forgotten and otherwise not communicated. How can we keep our commitments? King Josiah called on the people to celebrate Passover as an act of renewed obedience to the work to the worship as prescribed in God's covenant. We know that the covenant is the word of God, and that's what we should strive to do. We should strive to, when we read the word, say, you, you hear what is always said at the end, may God give a blessing to those who hear and do God's word. I have a comment. Okay. The comment is, is that um, the covenant is between an agreement between God and his people. Right. We want to be blessed. There are conditions in order for us to be blessed. And um, I was um, reading, we have the, 
the covenant, the Ark of Covenant. They don't know how it was displaced from the temple. But um, there were many wicked kings, and that could be a possibility of how the, the Ark of the Covenant got out of its place. Because God was, um, he was alleviating the the Levites from carrying the ark and, and had that on their shoulders. So he was giving a place so that that indicates that there was not a place for the ark of the covenant to rest. So wherever they moved it, they would have to carry it. So now they have a temple that they repair to put the ark of the covenant in it so it can be in there. And the Ark of the Covenant represented God's presence. Like how we have different flags for each country. And each country represents, each flag represents that country. Like we have different, um, like, like say we have a eagle. The eagle of this country is a national symptom, a national symbol of strength and power. The eagle is very strong and powerful. So the the flag represents our country, our states, and our the colonies, the original colonies. So when it comes to how it was divided up the people they were registered a certain way and they had to get into their proper places they had the re the levites the levites were the ones who were supposed to do the sacrifices beforehand it was the heads of the family but it's turned over it's done different in josiah's time where they had the levites to sacrifice the lambs and the other, whatever was sacrificed. Okay. Okay. Um. So, talking about promises and commitments. Okay. Um. says promises and commitments uh become neglected over over periods of time either they are forgotten or they're not c communicated and i was thinking about that there was a, there was a time when uh people didn't talk they didn't talk about god to their children so it's like a whole generation was left out In the lesson focus, King Josiah was a unique and inspiring leader who combined religion and political leadership. Through his devotion to God's word and reform, Josiah brought change to the nation. In a world where leaders often struggle with power and distorted spiritual leadership, Josiah's example remains relevant and teaches us valuable lessons about seeking God wholeheartedly, repenting, and obedience to scripture. And he gave an example of a person, a modern day person, was uh, Desmond Tutu, who was a South African bishop and anti-apartheid activist. He is an example of a modern day Josiah called to uh, righteousness and renewal. Tutu's unwavering commitment to justice, reconciliation, and human rights drew national and international attention to the injustices of apartheid. During South Africa's transition to democracy, Tutu advocated for forgiveness and reconciliation, helping to heal wounds and bridge divisions in a deeply divided society. 
His legacy extends beyond his role in ending apartheid. As he stood for justice, human rights, and compassion, inspiring people worldwide. Desmond Tutu's profound impact reminds us that courage, compassion, and unwavering commitment can change the course of history. So, just like uh, Desmond Tutu, he emulated Josiah. Uh, involving seeking God, obeying his word, and leading with integrity. And by Tutu's modern example, it demonstrates how individuals can make a difference by following God faithfully. In the lesson context, King Josiah was an important figure in the Old Testament who ruled over the kingdom of Judah between 640 and 609 BC. His reign was described in the book of Second Chronicles, uh, the 22nd and 23rd chapters, then Second Chronicles 34 and 35. Uh, despite his family history of wicked kings, Josiah was a godly king who ascended to the throne at the age of eight after his father was assassinated. Now let's stick a pen right there. It said, despite the family's history of wicked kings, he was godly to the throne. See, sometimes we don't have to follow our what we see every day. That's why we have to stay committed to the word of God and we have to follow it. And it makes out and make our path straight. If we keep the straight path, we, we can we can change the course of our family. And it said on um, one of the significant events of his reign was when the high priest of Hilkiah discovered the book of the law during the temple repairs. Josiah was moved to tears when he heard the law read out loud and called for a period of national repentance with a covenant made between the people and the Lord to follow his commandments. Josiah initiated significant reforms, including cleansing the temple of pagan objects, demolishing idolatrous high places, restoring the observance of the Passover, and removing mediums and witches from the land. Josiah's life is a testimony, testament to the influence of a, of a young age, wholehearted commitment to God, to God, and proper responsiveness to God's word. Despite dying in battle <clears throat> against Egypt, Pharaoh, Nechu, and Medidu, Josiah's godly life was and leadership delayed God's wrath on Judah due to King Josiah's evil deeds. Do you have anything to add to that? No. Okay. Insights. The Passover was a significant event where each household sacrificed a lamb as per God's commandment. And you can reference uh, Exodus chapter 12, verses 43 to 49. Josiah ensured that the Passover offerings were correctly slaughtered and consecrated, symbolizing redemption and atonement by God through the blood of the Lamb. Josiah is an excellent example of following God's commandments. We should prioritize obedience to God. I'll read that again. We should prioritize obedience to God's word and actively participate in worship, like Josiah. Leaders should encourage and equip those under their care for effective service. Now, let's talk about effective service. Effective service is knowing what you're supposed to do, and you carry out that. Uh, Completely. Effective serve, that's like whether, and that's, it doesn't matter whether it's in, in um, whether you're on the job or 
is whether you in the church. Now we know that when the priests went in the, in, in the uh, temple, if they did anything wrong, they could be struck dead right then. So we should be reminded that when we uh, make a commitment to God, uh, we have to be careful because God is watching. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. So, that's what it was saying here. We should prioritize obedience to God's word and actively participate in worship. Also, Josiah's reverence to the Holy Ark reminds us to honor God's presence and prioritize spiritual matters. The Passover lamb points to Jesus Christ, our ultimate Passover lamb, who provides redemption and forgiveness. Passover teaches us about faithfulness, leadership, and the importance of honoring God's commandments. <clears throat> now, in verses uh, 1 through 6, it says that Josiah and exemplified great leadership by choosing to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. His commitment to following God's commandment and the, leading the people to worship in a, is a reminder to us all to prioritize spiritual matters in our lives. Prioritize spiritual matters in our lives. His adherence to the uh, appointed time of Passover demonstrated his respect for God's teaching and his desire to honor him. He had an emphasis on proper planning and organization for the Passover. He was meticulous. That means that he, he was a student of detail. And we know that even when Moses uh, was told to build the ark, God gave him specific instructions, even to the to the inch about that ark. And it, God's word is yes and amen, and we should follow it to the inch. You know. Uh, <clears throat> It, like I mentioned before, we can be, uh, we can hear the word of God, but we can't just hear the word of God. We have to do it as well. So his, so his emphasis on proper planning and organization serves as a inspiration for spiritual leaders to be prepared and motivated for their roles. See, just like he instructed the Levites to return the ark to the temple, uh, Josiah showed his reverence for God's presence. Okay, I'm back. His act of restoring the ark to its rightful place reminds us of the importance of respecting and honoring God in our lives. Josiah's attention to detail in ensuring that the Passover offerings were properly slaughtered and consecrated symbolized God's redemption and atonement through reverence. His actions inspire us to honor God's presence and prioritize spiritual matters in our lives. Now, in verses of 16 to 19, Josiah was king, was a king who was renowned for his commitment to honor, to honoring God's appointed feasts and rituals. And I, as I mentioned before, he was meticulous. See, we should pay attention to detail and the fine print. I have a comment. Go ahead. It's um, they have a, they have holidays that are celebrated, and they have nationwide observances that take place. And 
sometimes we may wait for this person to do it or that person to do it but we should take initiative to do things and now see that's what Josiah did he he held a nationwide observance for the Israelites uh, when concerning the Passover uh, celebrating the deliverance of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt so he he took initiative and and sometimes when someone's in charge they do not take initiative and um, when we don't take it's in the scripture and I'm going to paraphrase it, it says too much is given much is required sometimes like I give you an example when Saul was in charge he was there when Stephen was being stoned and he did not take initiative to stop Stephen from being stoned God allow some things there's a permissive will and there's God's perfect will but we will be held accountable for what we do if it's in our power to speak up or to say something and we do or we do not I remember I had a pastor at one point that said um, he agreed with something that was going on and he said how he felt for doing that he said he won't do that anymore because um, you can just agree by not saying something or you can agree by saying something so um, we have to be uh, it's about accountability and responsibility and it's about knowing being in the moment and and we must keep our mind and our hearts clear so that we'll be able to hear God's Holy Spirit speaking to us when the Spirit says say something or when the Spirit um, uh, lets us know don't say anything when Jesus was taken from judgment hall to judgment hall and, and the leaders asked him questions at one point it was like as you say he would say as you say but he knew what to say even when the devil came and approached him and asked him this question and that's because his heart was clear his conscience was clear and we must give God reverence no matter what moment it's in or, 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 um, and, um, and I work with I work with um, senior people and some of the people are almost 100 years of age but one of the the things that that um, I really take into account is when we get down and it feels as if we're on our last leg no matter what place that we're at um, sometimes we may say and do certain things um, out in uh, in desperation and um, it's just so we must when we do have our health we must do the very best that we can do because we never know if we get down to our last will we be in the right mind to say and to do certain things that we need to do if we keep on putting things off and I thank God for Josiah didn't put it off for someone else to do God's work but he took initiative to hold a nationwide celebration for the Israelites coming out of captivity um, and slavery out of Egypt to God command commands is an example for us. Consider how wholeheartedly you seek God. Recommit and consistently examine areas where you need to recommit to Him. Remember that our lives like to study can be transformed when we seek God wholeheartedly, honor His word and live in community with fellow believers. And that living 
community that means live in harmony with fellow believers and our fellow man. Um, and the last uh, thing is the closing prayer, which says, Holy Spirit, empower us to obey your commands faithfully. Keep our heart diligent and our worship sincere and our unity strong. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you for the closing remarks and the prayer benediction. Okay, so the sacrifices for the priests and Levites, it was according to Moses' instructions. Now this big celebration and the division and everything was done on one day, and it was unusual for it to be done on one day. So that means there had to be um, organization, there had to be in one inch, they had to be on one accord to listen. I can just imagine how how everything had to be done, like you said, meticulously. He paid attention, attention. Josiah paid attention to detail. So when something's not done regularly, and I've heard people say this from time to time, we're, we're not used to doing it that way. But they had to trust that Josiah was knowledgeable and knew what he was doing. They had to put their trust in him. And when you have trusted someone, put your trust in, that means that you've seen them perform before, you've seen them do something before, and they're worthy of what, um, and they're, they're, they're worthy of their office. But we know that there was something different from um, Josiah. Josiah. And when we walk into a room, people should see that there's something different about us. There's something different about us. Even when Jesus came on the scene, the man with the legion of demons in him, he ran over to Jesus and 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 said the, the demon spoke through the man and said why do you come to torment us so there's a difference there's a countenance difference and demons know and even with the seven sons of Sceva it says uh I think Paul I know Jesus I know but who are you and they beat the sons so they were um they're bleeding they beat them naked so we must come correct if we're going to come at all. We must not come half stepping. That was a um, that was a um, a title that I was talking about. And I would like to bring that up as well. I'd like to bring that title up. It was in some notes. I'm gonna see where. It had to be in Ezekiel, maybe around the 38th chapter through the 40, 40, first chapter. We must come correctly. We must not come half-stepping. And There's a song that says, Lord, I'm running, trying to make 100, because 99 and a half won't do. This is not the time to be trying this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, um... And dancing around like a flamingo. It's a time to get things right. It's a time for restoration. It's a time for repentance. And it's a time for us to be revived. And I'd just like to thank the Lord for giving us this wonderful time for us to just think on these things. How it's time to come correct. How it's time to give God his best our best it's time to give god our best and um there's no room for excuses there's no room for uh i, I feel tired
the title was No Half Stepping. And uh, come correct or don't come at all. And um, don't be out of pocket. That's the subtitle. Don't be out of pocket. How um, we should make preparations to. If we know that we're going to be coming to God's temple. We should be making preparations. Like we make preparations for other things. We should prioritize doing the right thing for the Lord. This is the Lord. This is not man. This is not woman. We should be doing the right thing for the Lord. I thank the Lord for my mother right now. I thank the Lord for her leading the service. And I give the, the Lord. Um, give the Lord a thanks for all that he's done for us. How he has kept us. I pray. And I, I ask the Lord to continue to protect us, our going in and our coming out. I, I ask the Lord to continue to protect you for your going out and your coming in. Protect your children while they're at school, away from all of calamity and violence and bullies and uh, misunderstandings. Lord, I just pray that you are pleased. Put a hedge of protection around your believers. Praise the Lord. And I pray for those, Lord, who are traveling far and near, that you will please touch their vehicles. There's a song, the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. And also I pray for those who would like to have a closer walk with Jesus. It, we must first repent, Lord, I'm sorry, I surrender, I'm coming out with my hands up. Please forgive us for our sin. We must believe. What are we believing in? Believing that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Believing that Jesus can set the captive free. Believing that Jesus can break strongholds and destroy every yoke. That may be bounding you, believing that Jesus came, lived, and died, and God raised him from the dead. So we move from repenting to believing to becoming a disciple, a follower of Jesus. That means that we believe that Jesus can restore us. We believe that Jesus can revive us, and we're going to pick up our crosses daily and follow him. We believe that God raised him from the dead one of the scriptures says looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith that means we're looking to jesus for solutions we're looking to jesus for answers we're looking for jesus to step in and save us we're looking for jesus to help us to assist us to facilitate us in our daily walk so we when we look to jesus that means we look to the scriptures we read the scriptures we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman need us not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And if there's a right way to divide the word, there's a wrong way to divide the word. And we thank the Lord for Josiah uh, and the people, the priests, the people, the Levites, and how they divided themselves into divisions based upon uh, how they were registered, and how they came correct and how they approached God in the correct way. It's something how we can approach someone in the wrong way and the results will be different from when we approached him in the right way. Cain approached God in the wrong way when he came with a halfway blessing to the Lord. How are you going to bless someone halfway and expect a full blessing? And in the scripture, in Hebrews, it speaks about how Abel had a better sacrifice than Cain. And I'm paraphrasing. So, so um, I just thank the Lord for what he's done for me and what he's doing for you in your life. And now let's um, finish up. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your of our faith, who for the joy, he set joy before him, despising the cross, 
enduring the shame, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. See, Jesus is interceding. He's praying for us. Thank God that he's praying for us. P-R-A-Y-I-N-G. Praise the Lord, not P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. And we should be praying for those. And like I said in Luke, the scripture in Luke, I said, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. And we should be doing that. It's a difference in, in uh, praying for our friends, but pray for our enemies. Praise the Lord. Pray for our enemies. And that means, it says, um, we should we should um we should do right in spite of do right in spite of says so trust in the lord and do good praise the lord now to the benediction now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever and everyone said amen amen and amen